playing around some more with the potentiometer and uh, the NeoPixels. Again, I got the potentiometer wired to pin three. That would be here, one of the extra pins. And then to the left of pin three is power and ground. Signal has to go into the middle pin. This is a different potentiometer. And then power and ground. Um, many people use that input to change brightness. So as I turn my potentiometer up, my NeoPixels go up. So you could probably try, you know, try that with motors, you know, things like that. NeoPixels and motors are good examples of that. Changing the speed, changing the brightness. Um, I have a little rainbow thing running on those 10, plus I put a piece of tissue paper there because they get bright. So turn it up. Mirrors down. Mirrors up. Down. So let me show you the code for that. Again, set up a NeoPixel strip on pin two. That's where they're at on the uh, bit booster. Turn off the LED array, the five by five array, because pin three is part of that LED array. Um, and then, again, I created a variable called dial, call it whatever you want, and I set it to read analog pin three, and then I use some math um, and set the strip brightness. Now this is understanding that the brightness should go from 0 to 255. And understanding that the dial is bringing in the numbers 0 to 1023. So I divided them by 4. So 1023 divided by 4 is, you know, like 250 something. I didn't do the hard math. Um, and then just show the rainbow. So whatever, you know, so the 1050, 1023 divided by 4 is going to get me the total brightness. So I'll leave aside and uh, work it down. Math is in uh, that little bracket right there. So I had to use variables. I had to use math. I had to use, I had to add a NeoPixel extension. Don't forget that. And I had to use the logic and I had to use the LED blocks. So any one program uses a whole bunch of blocks. So there's one use of potentiometer.